Got to take him straight back through the zoo, and it's now peak period at Australia Zoo. The place is chock-a-block full of patrons. Guests, visitors, kids. We can't take the risk of anyone coming around a free croc. Bruised and battered from his head clashing competition with Cassie, he heads straight back into his hole. Graham settled into his new territory nicely. Beautiful transition where he's come out of one environment and into the other. And Bindi's doing great too. Now we've got to test the waters by going in there and trialling him with his first feed. This could be a little volatile. And this is Graham's first encounter with the patrons of Australia Zoo. And the first time he's been out for everyone to see at Australia Zoo. I don't have to worry about Bindi as a general rule. What I'm hoping to demonstrate to you today here at Australia Zoo is how crocodiles use camouflage to get their food. I see. Good hit, Graham. When you look at Graham, you're looking at a modern day dinosaur. 200 million years they date back. I see you, boy. Here you go, here, 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 here. Here you go, mate, here you go, here you go, here you go. There's a good boy. And he's hitting hard, like he always used to. Watch what happens when I touch his water. He doesn't like it. That's an infringement of his territory. People are captivated and he's hitting like a ton of bricks. Woo! Go, Graham. Come on, big boy. Whoop. Steady, Steve-o. The crowd love it when I nearly die. See when you touch his water how upset he gets. He's doing well. This is great. Here's the ultimate demonstration that our capture and release was perfect. He's looking good. Real good. And he's in his prime. All the zoo staff are totally stoked. Now for the ultimate test. Will he let me go in his water? Come on, Oz. I'm pretty sure he's sitting on the bank thinking, I don't like that bloke in my he's water. It. He's making it stink. Here he comes. Coming in. That's my boots. And that's the biggest mistake anyone can make in Australia. Sharing water with crocodiles is a very, very big mistake. He's going the boot. He'd get food poisoning if he ate that, Steve. Come on, buddy. Here you go, Uggs. Come on. That's a good boy. Here you go. You want it? You can see after all that feeding and all that action, he settled down, slowed down, and now I should be able to get around close enough to have a good close look at him. Check him out for rub marks, score marks, injuries. He looks great. And the crowd love it. Me too. What a little beauty. Everything's gone so smooth until we hit a flood of biblical proportions. The boss who saved a Sunshine Coast man from the jaws of a crocodile says he was just acting on instinct. Croc hunter Steve Irwin says his colleague was lucky not to have lost his leg. On Friday night, they entered the happy home and territory of Graham and his girlfriend, Bindi. They thought they were safe. We've been here since 1970 and we've been dealing with floods virtually every single year. And uh, this one took the cake. It was an absolute steamer. I mean, this is a flood where human fatality took place. Crocs love floodwaters. I mean, that's when they take over the land. We jumped in, we started cleaning debris out of the fence. Seconds later, 
Graham has snuck in whack and hit Wes right in the thigh. Those teeth punctured Wes in the buttocks and leg. Irwin did what he does best, jumping on the Crocs back. It worked. Graham let go. When the Crocs hit, he's kind of driven him. And so instantaneously, I've just jumped, grabbed hold of the Croc right around the back legs and hung onto his back legs. Wes is a big guy. He's like 90 kilos. He's actually rolled out of the crocodile's mouth, which gives me the opportunity to grab hold of his leg, pull it up, grab hold of our safety equipment, which is um, one of these. We call it a safety stick. Grabbed hold of his leg and I've just started jamming him. Wes got up into the fence. Now, this is the most critical point. Wes has got onto the fence. He's taken a big set of punctures in his leg. And then he pivoted on the fence. And when I looked up, he was on the fence staring back down at me, ready to jump back in. Zoo director Wes Mannion is recovering in hospital. His boss, Steve Irwin, a.k.a. the crocodile hunter, has become his hero. I got to save my best mate's life. And Wes is tough, rugged, made of the right stuff, and he made a full recovery really quick. I mean, crocs are like people. He believed that night he won, and he got me out of his territory, which is good for him. You know, I mean, that's his job. And that's a crocodile's job, so he did... He, he did the best thing. He got me and Steve out of his enclosure um, as quickly as he wanted us to. So that's good for his psyche. Looking back on that night, Wes and I still get goosebumps. A flood of biblical proportions. Water like no man has ever seen before flowing through Graham's new environment. We were already nervous. The crocs were on edge. They're just loving the flood water because the land becomes water, which becomes their territory. We had to go in. We had to clean the debris. And thank goodness our emergency procedures are that good and so well rehearsed. That night we went in, by crikey, it was just sheer instinct that Wes got his leg and his life back. The rain, the night, it's confusing, it's flooded, it's adrenaline. We started throwing debris out. He's hit. There's no way I'm going to let my best mate die. I've grabbed hold of the clock. Wes has rolled out of his mouth. And before Graham could hit him in the head, Wes got up the fence. I grabbed the stick, I jammed him. Next thing I know, we're both on the fence and we're clear. We jumped the fence, and it wasn't until we got about three or four metres before I thought to think, how's Wes's leg? Come on, Wes, come on, mate, we've got to go. Keep moving, Wes, come on, mate. i just got to get you up on this high ground and check your wounds. Come on, mate, you can do it. And that's it. He's got his leg, he's got his life, and Graham, he's got his territory. Mate, no doubt about it, Graham had the last bite, and that's the way it should be. Crocodiles are apex predators, right at the top of the food chain. We love him with all our hearts. You just can't kiss him on the lips, because he'll snap you in half. Well, what an epic Graham's revenge. He's got the last bite on us.